G'day, mate. Oh, darn. Can't say that. Only Aussies can. I mean, they came up with it, so they own it. Why don't Americans have a cool greeting like g'day? I mean, all we have is something like, hi, you fella. Or my personal favorite, how's it hanging? I mean, what the heck is hanging anyway? Today, we have Andamooka Matrix Opal. This one weighs 960 grams. That's about 4,800 carats. And this one weighs 760 grams, which is about 3,800 carats. I'm going to treat this opal, and then we'll cut it up and give it away. But it really doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Riley Gunn. But Riley lives about 9,500 miles away. That's like 15,000 million kilometers. And I've got the opal. So who's in control anyway? And if you answered Sheila, take another guess. If you want to call Riley to tell him that I'm cutting up his opal and giving it away, you can reach him at opalauctions.com. His store is called 53 Frogs. And if you think I know why it's called that, you can ask Riley yourself while you're making the call. Two birds with one stone. I mean, two stones with actually no birds. Now I'm going to put these opals into a rotating barrel with abrasive material inside. I would call it a tumbler, but every time I try to write that word, my idiot devices put it as tumbler. I mean, don't they know how to spell? You know that Australians are not necessarily as happy as good day sounds. I mean, they call Americans yanks. I think that's a profanity, right? Oh, wait a minute. That's wank. Right, right, wank. And what about that guy with the alligators? I, I mean, crocodiles. I mean, he's kind of mean. It's not a comb. That's not a comb. Oh, that's a comb. Oh, hell. This tumbling is going way too slow. They're starting to get pissed off. Put her in fast forward, Sheila. We've got Opal to tend to. Well, that took the rough edges off, but we need to grind these suckers. Sheila, go get Zuck. Tell him to do one of his tricks. Yes, I know I hate Zuck, but can't you see I'm desperate? Wait a minute, Sheila. Never mind. Now that I've exposed most of the surface of the two huge opals, I'm going to put them in sugar solution and heat them up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 80 degrees centigrade, for about 24 hours. But I'm not going to make you wait. Sugar dissolved in water at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we just put the opals in and then put it in the oven. Now to take the opals out of the sugar, I mean, what could go wrong? Does it look... Whoa. Well, I'm not going to let that happen again. Well, it was Sheila's fault anyway, and she's been disciplined, I can assure you. Now to take this sugar-fired opal to my brand new acidification center. Oh, man. Anyway, my new acidification center. I'm going to put the stones in before I put the acid in. This is concentrated sulfuric acid. You need hazmat equipment to use this. I got some acid on my hand here and I'm neutralizing it with sodium bicarbonate, baking soda which covers the bottom of the container. I have important information regarding safety equipment and proper disposal of acid in the description. You can already see that the acid is now black. The sugar molecules have been reduced to pure carbon and we hope that the sugar inside of the opal also turned black. That's the goal of treatment, to turn the background black. You can see a distinct green color. It's black on one side, but the other side is... When someone asks you, what's the nicest thing you've seen all day? Well, for me, it's this. Pretty impressive. So, I'm gonna mark an area to cut, maybe two areas and we'll proceed to cut. What I see in the camera, if it comes out like this in the video, well, it's too bad because what I can see with my naked eye is a couple of blue bands within this green. It makes it very, very pleasant for me. I love blue and, uh, man, this is just awesome. Okay, this is a small chunk of Matrix. It's only 2,800 carats. How well did it treat? That's kind of a trick question because it treated extremely well. The objective is for the stone to turn black so you can see the color. Thing is, this is the color. It's a very 
rather narrow bar, but it probably goes through the whole thing, and this will yield a bunch of nice matrix opal when I have time to mess with it. The green monster has more than enough for me to handle in a single video, so I'll set this aside, but I will be back to it. I guarantee. You know, like I've said many times in the past, you know, Riley's like about 10,000, 12,000 miles away, and he's there, and I'm here, and I have his opal, and, well, he's got some of his opal, but he doesn't have this, so I think we're going to have our way with this stone. Let's slice the green monster. The green monster. I mean, honestly, I would polish this thing and just leave it as a specimen. But Riley sells opal for a living, and whether I cut it up or not is immaterial, because he will cut it up in order to sell it. Rough, untreated matrix is pretty scarce, and Riley is one of the very few that I know of who actually has it to sell. I've never really made a matrix arrowhead, but I think it can be done. I guess this is our trial run. So I'm going to go and see if I can run flakes across the fronts of these, and then we'll see if we can do the backs, and then maybe we'll have arrowheads, and maybe we would have wished that we kept them as cabochons. Maybe. We, that is. Sheila and me. So Operation Matrix Arrowhead is moving along pretty well. But will they treat? This is the most cutting that I've ever done on one stone. In real time, this was about 25 minutes. The most important part is cutting the end off, the part with the best green color. I cut it thick enough to get two cabochons. Here I'm finally getting the end to come off, right there. Now I'm cutting another area that I wanted to try to get a two-tone stone out of. Here I'm slicing it down the middle. I call this bread loafing. It's not loafing. I do a lot of loafing and I know this is bread loafing. Now I hope to get this green color on both of these slices. It should be pretty darn good. It seems to go all the way through there. This is the piece that I cut off to, to try to get a two-tone cabochon out of. This is not from the good green side, but it's got pretty good green and pretty good multicolor. This is the end. No, not that end. This is the bright green end of the stone with the blue lines. I cut these thick so that I could easily bread loaf it, but I think I cut it a little bit too thick. I'm sorry, Riley. You know I was only trying to help. But this end is where we expect to get our best cabochons, and there's a ton more of this stuff left in the green monster. Trust me. I worked on this slab from the very end, and I've decided to go for one color. One big green cabochon. With the other bread loaf slice, I'll be going for a large teardrop shaped cabochon, a two color stone. Here we go. Four stones on a stick. One of them's little, and the others are not little. And now the final stones. At 5.03 carats, it's Ranger, a prickly angled green sparkler. At 42.68 carats, we have Pooch. She's fat and happy and maybe pregnant. Ranger's a horny little bugger. Then it's Malika, 72.44 carats, the star of the show? Maybe. But she's green and lean and shaped like a spleen. Sort of. 
Next, it's two-tone Kate, a shiny 84.23 carat teardrop. Will she find a new home, or does Riley want her for himself? We don't know. Now, who could have predicted that Edward and Alba would look like this? Brilliant red multicolor opal. Now, they used to be a thing, but now they both need new homes, if you know what I mean. To enter the giveaway, use the word arrowhead, or just head, in a comment. And last but not least, we have this vial of Matrix Opal chips. Someone told me to save your chips, and I did, and I'm giving them away. And now the winners from last time. The winner of Pop, the 11.77 carat opal is... Jeanette B. Gina, the 19.73 carat opal goes to... Gary Baker. The 30.40 carat Black Beauty Bertha goes to Molly Nakamori. 30.40 carats Bubbly Bright Blinky goes to Susan Miller. It looks like we're about ready to have the 50K potluck dinner, so get your stuff ready. And for those who want to hear me rant about Matrix Opal treatment, stick around for about 15 seconds or so. Either way, I'll see you next time. Okay, I've got two chunks of Andamooka Matrix Opal. Now, I want you all to understand right at the top, so don't ask me about this in the comments. Look, this is what this material looks like. It's white or tan or beige or whatever you want to say. And there is no appreciable color. It has no value as jewelry, art, or anything else at this point. I mean, it might give you some comfort that, hey, I've got some Andamooka Matrix Opal. And people will look at it and they'll say, I don't see any opal here. Well, that's the point. If you don't treat it, you won't see it for most Andamooka Matrix Opal. So you got to get over it. Don't ask me, does it lose value if it's treated? If it's not treated, it has no value. No value. Zero. So forget that. We have to treat it if we want the color to show up. Treating is generally bad. I don't like it any more than you do. But I do appreciate the beauty of Andamooka Matrix Opal once it's treated. End of mini rant.